Dumelang, um, let us finish budgeting, which is question three of last year's paper two. And these are the questions that you should have done by now. The first one wants us to explain the changes that Adam made. We also need to explain some of the salespeople regretted their decision to agree to these changes, code figures, or show calculations. For me to be able to answer this question, I needed to go back. Now, 3.4, we need to refer to information G, budgeted and actual figures. And 3.4.1 says, in order to increase sales, Adam decided to change the way in which the salespeople are paid each month from 1 November 2023. The salespeople agreed to the change, explained the changes that Adam made. For me to be able to see those changes, I need to go to information G. So I see that it's all about budgeted and actual figures for November 2023. Average number of customers, they increased cash sales, decreased credit sales, increased total sales, increased salaries for salespeople, which is what question is this question is based on. For the budgeted, it was 165. There was no commission. But then when you look at salaries for the actual, it has decreased to 20,000 and commission for salespeople has gone up to 141,050. Then they gave us delivery expenses. The only change that I see that relates to salespeople is that they were no longer getting paid salaries. Instead, they were getting paid on commission. Commission is just a percentage of sales. So you get paid a certain percentage of sales as a salary in a way or as a remuneration. It's not really a salary. So here, that is the only change that I saw with respect to salespeople. And um, they say identify. No, it's not this one here. It is... This one here, explain the changes that Adam made. So what I saw is that salespeople will not be paid a salary. Instead, they will be paid on commission, which will be based on sales. Now explain why some of the salespeople regretted their decision to agree to these changes, quote figures or show calculations. What I noticed is that they, they were getting paid 165 for salaries. But now they will be paid a sum of these two figures here, which is one, one part will be a salary and the other part will be commission. And when you add those two, it gives you 161,050. I will regret immediately because it means that now I'm earning less than what I was normally earning. So that is the most evident change I saw. So hence I said here, salaries as budgeted was 165,000 commission actually paid, including the other salary, it will be 161,050, which is lower than the salary that they will have received. So immediately when you realize that your salary is going down instead of going up, you will automatically regret what you did or the decision you made. Now, it says Adam feels that the decision has benefited the company while sales manager Miley is concerned that it did not benefit the company. Provide one point with figures or calculations to support each of these opinions. Um, as I have shown you here, what I saw is that sales went up, customers went uh, the number of customers went up and their salary went down. So in essence, sales increased. Customer number of customers increased, meaning that it's working. The salespeople succeeded or put a lot of effort in getting more customers and increasing sales. Yet, the business will be paying less for their salaries. So that is the only benefit I saw. That is why um, Adam will support this. So in my explanation, I said that Adam will support this 
as it has benefited the company because sales went up by 30% and there were 160 new customers. Salaries and commission went down by 3,950. The entity made more income while reducing expenses. Now, as for Miley, um, Miley will say that this is a concern because now people end less than what they were actually earning. And this might demoralize them. They might not have a good spirit in order to fight to get more customers. Because they'll be asking ourselves, I mean, we increased customers, we increased in sales. But look at our salaries going down. So what is the point of doing it if whatever we try, our salary goes down? All right. So it will affect salespeople morale. And that's what I said. Um, note that sales reduction, I mean, salary reduction could result in employees being demotivated and have low morale. Others will work hard to increase sales. And this can lead to burnout, which can lead to sales decrease. And burnout is when you're putting, you're working really, really hard, but you are not making any difference because you're not doing it right. You're tired. Um, you're not thinking straight. You've put everything in there to the extent that it affects your work ethic. It affects your work energy. In a way, it will not yield desired results. Now, I, I also noticed that salespeople were now focusing on increasing sales, even if it meant encouraging customers to buy goods on credit. And when you look at sales... What really increased sales is not cash sales. Instead, it is credit sales. And if it's going to continue like this, where salespeople encourage customers to buy, even if it's on credit, this will affect the company's cash flow. And ultimately, it will affect the company's liquidity. In essence, the company will be negatively affected because think about it. You're selling goods on credit, but you have to pay your salespeople cash. Where are you going to get the cash? You have to wait for your customers to pay you so that you can pay your salespeople. That can't be. Salespeople want to be paid immediately. You can't owe them. So in essence, you don't have enough cash to pay them, but your cash is tied up in debtors who will pay you later. So in a way, it can disadvantage the company or your business. Okay. Now it wants us to, they want us to calculate the net effect of the purchase of property on the receipts and payments in the cash budget. I had to go back to this page and focus on information H. They say information relevant to the purchase of property. Adam plans to finance the purchase by acquiring a loan and using the fixed deposit that matured. Now, the cost of the property is 2.5. That will result in a cash outflow. Fixed deposit matured on the 1st of January 2024. That is an inflow. So you will be receiving maturing means you're getting the fixed deposit back. And a new loan from BK Bank on the 1st of January 2024, it means you got money from the bank they are loaning you money and then you had to pay interest on loan which is 18,750 monthly maintenance amounted to 12,500 so all of these will be your expenses that that will result in a cash outflow when we look at cash itself um and i just want to see what i have in the cash budget at the moment so when it comes to the fixed deposit, I noticed that the fixed deposit was giving us interest of 7.5. So we won't be getting that anymore since it has matured. And I also noticed the rent. Rent was 31,640. We will not be having that anymore. So basically, this is a benefit and that is a cost. So you won't be getting that anymore, but you're saving 31,000. The 1,640 for rent, which is an inflow. The 7.5 will be an outflow because you will not be getting it back. So that's what buying property will cause. So what I said here is that when you buy property, 
um, you will get an inflow of a million rand and get an inflow of 1.5 from the loan. A million rand is from a fixed deposit and then you're going to use that money to pay for property, to buy the property and then you're going to have to pay interest, you're going to have to pay maintenance as well as insurance but you are benefiting, you will be saving that 1640 that won't be a rent expense anymore because you'll be using your own property but you will be losing on the interest that you will have got had you not taken your fixed deposit. Now, note that the outflows are minuses and the inflows are plus. So I got a minus 7,110, which results in a cash outflow. So the purchase of this property will result in a cash outflow of 7,110. Then they say, give one reason why Adam has decided to go ahead with this purchase. Well, what I thought about is because Adam was buying property and know that by buying this property, he'll be spending more on maintenance as well as interest on loan. But the thing is, as time goes, the value of your property goes up. So that 18750 and that 12500 you are losing them every month, right? But towards the end, if you want to sell that business, you are going to sell that property at a higher price because property, plant, and equipment, it appreciates. It doesn't depreciate. Obviously, for now, up to grade 12, it doesn't depreciate. Adversity is a different story. Um, and... All these monies that he spent to maintain this property or cost to the property, he will get it back when he decides to sell the property. And that's why I think it was a good move to buy that property because if you were renting that property, the rent that you kept on paying every month, you have lost it. You've gained nothing. But here you will get that 18750 and that 12500 accumulated when you sell this property. So every money, every penny, every cent, every rent you spend, you will get it back when you sell that property. Okay. Hence, I said, as time goes, rent will continue to increase more than the interest on loan and maintenance rates and insurance. In the long term, Adam will save cash. Property is an investment and Adam can sell it at a higher price in the future. Therefore, Adam will get back all he has spent on the property. You got it. Did it help? I hope it did. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget not to skip the ads. And this video is... It's just a continuation of other videos that I recorded a while back. You will find this under podcast accounting grade 12 DBE paper 2. Okay. Um, and then you'll find it under podcast or playlist. It's all there. So this is just a second to last. I'm going to do the last question shortly. Thank you for watching. My name is Refilo Di Jamel. Hold on.